What is it, my ducks and drakes? Welcome to the Carter Lake. Today we are reading chapters 9 and 10 of Misunderstanding, a Cedar Heads fanfic on Wattpad by Elliot Green 333. Links to the book and to the author will be in the description, as well as trigger warnings. So if you don't want to be spoiled, you can head into this blind. Or if you are concerned for yourself or others around you, be sure to check the description. Please be safe. With that, let us start with Part 9. Deceit. I walked back into Roman's room after talking to Patton. I have no idea if he actually believes me or not, but it's better than if thinking I'm a monster for erasing Roman's mind. Speaking of, Roman is getting too curious. I understand that he doesn't remember anything, but he's beginning to get on my nerves. He's gonna get me caught, and if he does, I don't care what he does or doesn't remember. I'll kill the poor man, not if he gets me caught when... Back in the room, Roman was going through all of his drawers. When he saw me, he perked up. You should tell me when you're going somewhere next time, Deceit. I was worried when I turned around and you were gone. I don't know what I'd do without you, he said. Frankly, I don't know what I'd do without me right now either, I grumbled. He shrugged, digging through his drawers again. Say, who were you talking to out there? Are there more people here? He questioned. Yes, that was Patton. And you'll be doing me a favor by not talking to him, I instructed. Why? He innocently asked. He is my boyfriend, and right now we're on a thin rope because of you, so I'd appreciate it if you- He pulled a sword out from one of the drawers. I yelped in shock and jumped back. Oh, put that down! I yelled. This is amazing. You've collected so many neat treasures and cool artifacts in your time. Tell me, where did you get all this cool stuff anyway, Deceit? For the last time, Roman, this is your room. All of this is your stuff. Stuff you have collected yourself. I don't even live in this house. I'm not like you. I tried to explain. You should take me to your house, then. I want to know more about my best friend. When he said that, I almost wrapped my hands around his neck. This is going to be the death of me. Why do you care? I asked, turning away from him. Because you're all I know. You've been with me all my life. You tell me ever since I was formed. He sincerely told me. You did not just form! I yelled through gritted teeth. You've been alive for almost thirty years. You're part of Thomas Sanders. You are his creativity. You run this place with Logan, Virgil, and Patton. They are your friends. The only reason I'm involved in this is because I did this. I, f I finished. I was panting. Absolutely overwhelmed with emotions. I broke down onto my knees, placing my head in my hands. I never have I wanted to go back in time more. Never have I wanted to not have my magic. Never have I wanted to ditch the Mind Palace more than I do right now. But I can't. Thomas needs me. Patton needs me. I need him. I need him right now. I need him to tell me things will be okay. The scars on my hands burn. I want to hurt. It's what I deserve for doing all this. Uh, I'm sorry, Rowan muttered, placing a hand on my shoulder. I looked up at him, confused in my expression. I get that you're upset with me, and while I'm not entirely sure why, I want to help you. He lifted his hand out to me, helping me to my feet. It seems there's something you know that I don't. Maybe you could teach me what I've forgotten? I nodded, wiping my eyes of painful tears. We can try. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? It can't get any worse. I chuckled. Roman agreed. He 
backed up into his bed, taking a seat and listening to me. Okay, so we all are a part of a man named Thomas Sanders. He is our host, and we're his personality. I represent his deception and lies, while you are his creativity. Roman nodded along. God, I hope this works. Or at the very least, trigger some sort of memory that I can work with. Patton is Thomas's morality. He senses right and wrong, along with being the core center of his emotions. Logan is logic, the core function of all of Thomas's knowledge of planning. He is also the center of his right arm. You are center of his left arm. I'm not entirely sure how that works, though. Virgil is his anxiety, all of his fears and worries. Does any of this make sense? Roman seemed confused, trying to connect all this information into his head. I was silently crossing my fingers, hoping that something, anything, I said triggered his memories in one way or another. I'm sorry, it doesn't, he admitted. I took in a big, heavy sigh. I pinched right above my nose. At this point, I don't know what else to do. I turned around, placing my hands against one of the dressers. I looked at myself in the mirror he had above it. I had to fix this. I just don't know how. I don't know Roman well enough to tell him something that will be sure to bring back his memories. Maybe I'm overlooking something. Maybe this is beyond trigger of memory. If my magic took his memories away, perhaps magic can bring them back? That has to be the answer. That's the only thing I have yet to try. I have to try. This is my way to help. My magic got Roman into this mess. My magic has to be one to save him and get me out of this. I sighed. All right, Roman, I have an idea, but you're going to have to trust me, I said. When I turned around, he was gone. Part 10. Virgil. I sunk down with Logan and Patton. Thomas just summoned us for some reason that I'm unsure of. I mean, it's almost midnight. What the hell could he possibly be dwelling on this late at night? Appearing in my normal spot by the stairs, Thomas immediately seemed off. He was ever so slightly shaking and seemed very stressed. His laptop was open on the couch, and there were mountains of lined paper all wound where he was once sitting. Pat and Logan popped up in their usual spots. I didn't expect Princey to show up, but when he did, I was surprised. He was dressed like it was a casual Friday. He'd never miss an opportunity to be extra and wear his royal costume. What happened to him? Guys, I really need your help. Well, I mainly need Roman's help. Thomas panicked, turning to the creative side. Okay, you know, everyone has been calling me Roman lately, and I still have no idea why. <laughs> he laughed. We all order him. Why doesn't he know his name? Because your name is Roman. Are you alright? Logan asked, but he turned to the logical side, looking at him as if trying to remember him. You're Virgil, right? He asked. No, wait. That's Virgil. He carefully re remarked, pointing to Patton. No, kiddo. I'm Patton. He slowly spoke. Oh, right. I mean, I, I can't talk to you. Deceit did, didn't want me to. Deceit doesn't want you talking to me? Patton repeated. Wait. Deceit? Logan questioned. What is even going on anymore? Thomas cried out. I was going to add something to the conversation when something caught my eye. In the opposite corner from me, behind the couch, was Deceit, who was barely poking up and didn't seem to notice me staring at him. He looked super panicked, just gnawing at Roman while thinking of how to fix whatever was happening. You okay, Virgil? I heard Logan whisper over to me. I jumped in fright, turning back to him. I, I'm fine. Just, just getting anxious. 
I told him. He nodded, seeming to understand my feelings. I, I just don't understand why you're acting like this, Roman. I mean, you're spouting all this nonsense, Pennon said, getting teary. The sea looked heartbroken from a spot, as if feeling bad that Pennon was on the edge of crying. I took note of that. I'm spouting nonsense. How do you think I feel? I'm new to all of this, too, he claimed. What do you mean you're new to all this? You've been in Thomas's creativity for his entire life, Logan told him. You know, that's what Deceit said. You have been communicating with Deceit. I mean, I know we just did an episode with him, but you guys aren't that close, Thomas cried. What are you talking about? I've known Deceit my entire dis existence. Roman laughed. I could see Deceit flailing his arms around from behind the couch. I tried not to bring attention to it, but Roman did. Oh, there he is now, the prince pointed out. What? Logan spat. Everyone turned to the living room, trying to spot the snake. I watched him sink out just in time. Instead... His hand popped up through the floor next to Roman's foot. He grabbed the prince by the ankle and pulled him back down with him. The others turned back around, starting to break into panic when they noticed Roman was gone now. Logan kept looking at me to see if I was all right. I was doing my best to keep my exterior calm, but internally I was like a hurricane. I was so scared. What the hell had this done to Roman? More importantly, why was he trying to fix whatever he had done? That was very unlike him. My mind kept spiraling until I felt a hand on my shoulder. What? I yelled in my tempest tongue. Logan re retracted his hand as Patton and Thomas shot their heads toward me. I grew red, not liking the sudden attention. I think we're done here. Patton, why don't you try and help Thomas? Logan suggested. With that, the logical side pulled me back into the mind palace. Once we appeared back in the living room, I felt I could finally breathe again. Th thanks, Lo. I said, flashing him a quick smile. Of course. Are you okay? He asked. I found it charming that I cared, but more than anything right now, I need to have a little chat with deceit. Yeah, yeah. I I'm doing okay, just in a little shock, that's all. Perhaps you should sit down for a while then, Logan suggested. As much as I wanted to do that with him, I couldn't. Something was going on, and the blood was on Deceit's clothed hands. Thanks, Lo, but I think I just need to be alone right now. I lied. Without looking back, I headed up the stairs. I really do like Logan. I don't think I realized it as much as first, but the more we've been hanging out, the more the idea of us kissing has been filtering out my nightmares. Once upstairs, I headed straight to Roman's room. Before entering, I pressed my ear to the door. The thin wood gave off the sounds of seat talking to someone, presumably Roman. I took a heavy sigh, knocking on the door. The room went dead silent. As hushed, whispered, filled it. I couldn't make out what they were saying, but they were panicked. Surprisingly, though, Penny came out of Roman's room. I was a little surprised, but didn't let my demeanor fade. Oh, Fee, what a surprise! He giggled, giving me a wave. Out of nowhere, I tightly gripped his hand. I held it out in front of him, letting him know I wasn't messing around. You're hurting me, V. He whined, trying to pull out of my iron grip. I'm I'm sorry. I just found it slightly odd. Both you and Roman have called me V. His face dropped, getting replaced with paranoia. And there is only one person I know that calls me that. He dropped his head, understanding that he messed up. I let go of his hand and watched him slowly morph back into the seat. Fine. You got me. 
he hissed. I smirked to myself. What did you do to Roman deceit? I growled lowly. He bit his lip, searching the dictionary of lies embedded in his brain. He sighed, knowing he was already knee-deep in whatever he had done. You're gonna want to come inside, he muttered. With that, he opened Roman's door. I was very scared, but I knew this is what I had to do. I followed deceit inside. And that is the end of our adventures for today. If you'd like to continue reading the book next week, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when the next chapters come out next week. You could also find the past episodes in the playlist or read the book for yourself in the description below. Once again, thank you for listening. My social medias are in the description below. And, like always, do your best.